I'm Jiao Guo. I'm a software engineer from LinkedIn. And uh, today I'm very proud to uh, introdu introduce to you about how we increase the uh, query processing resiliency of Pino deployment at LinkedIn by introducing the adaptive server selection and the runtime query killing. This work is a joint effort between our SRE and SDE team. Okay, so before we get into the like technical details, I want to introduce to you like what is Pino and uh, the deployment status of Pino at LinkedIn. Then we want to see how we actually improved the reliability of our system uh, by using these two approaches. And in the end, we want to discuss some future works. And I'll, I can also take questions. And um, yeah, so Pino is basically a uh, open source distributed uh, OLAP data store uh, with a Lambda architecture uh, which is able to serve queries using both offline data and real-time uh, stream ingestion. So it serves analytical queries uh, with very low latency. By low latency, I really mean in a matter of a few milliseconds. So such performance is backed by our very efficient uh, columnar data store with rich indices. So here is a simple diagram of the Pinot architecture. So as you can see on the left side, we have the real-time server, which ingests data from the um, input data flow. So within LinkedIn, we use uh, Apache Kafka. And uh, on the other side, we have the offline server, which will basically pull the ETL segments from some deep data store, it's some shared storage. So on top of these servers, uh, we have a broker layer. Well, a query lands on the broker layer. The broker will decide by the time range of the query and file the query to the uh, real time, both the real time and the offline server. So that in the final result, we will incorporate the information from the most up-to-date recent data and also the ETL data. So behind the scenes, there's also this uh, controller. Uh, which drives the cluster's overall state and health. So it uses Apache Helix as the uh, cluster manager, and uh, it uses Zookeeper to store the cluster uh, state and metadata. So actually, a lot of renowned companies have integrated Pino as part of their ecosystem, and uh, specifically within LinkedIn, uh, we like use Pino to power a wide range of use cases from member-facing analytics like uh, who view your profile, uh, people you may be interested in, job you may be interested in, uh, to some enterprise-level uh, products uh, like the dashboard for the recruiters to um, know like wh how many talents are there on the job market, uh, for example, by geographical regions and all the way down to some internal products like the um, business analysis dashboard uh, and uh, some tools uh, within LinkedIn. So now let's dive into our Pinot resiliency journey started with the adaptive source selection. The problem the adaptive source selection wants to solve actually stems from the scale of deployment of Pino at LinkedIn. So we have over 1,500 uh, broker hosts and over 8,000 server hosts. And on top of them, we serve 4,500 plus tables with more than 300K QPS. And a, um, like a query processing workflow can be uh, illustrated in a simple way like this. So Pino stores data in small chunks called data segments. And usually these data segments are replicated over a bunch of Pino servers. So for example, here we have three segments, uh, three segments replicated over three servers. 
So at this moment, where query comes, if we're using the conventional round robin routing algorithm, it will just uh, um, like evenly distributed these queries to all the servers. And there's certain problems with this approach. Um, so because as all like large scale deployed uh, um, data services, uh, penal servers are also susceptible with both transient and permanent server slowness issues. So this slowness can be caused by GC pause, network issues, these failures, all unexpected hardware and software problems. And with wrong robin selection, uh, a, state, uh, a static portion of the queries uh, will be deterministically routed to that slow server. So let's say in this case we have server one uh, as the slow server. So it is basically experiencing some issue. And then in this case, basically one third of the queries are gonna be impacted by this slowness event. So uh, in this case, even though there might still be error on the server two and server three, which can like take these queries from server one, they will not do it. They will just stay there and uh, watch all the DOOM queries going to server one get slowed down. So, yeah, we definitely need a more intelligent uh, routing algorithm so that we can kind of push our system to a like, higher limit. Therefore, we will introduce this uh, adaptive server selection algorithm. So before we have this uh, intelligent routing algorithm, uh, Pinot team actually spent a lot of engineering hours uh, every quarter to just uh, troubleshoot the server slowness issues. So what makes things more disappointing is that a lot of these issues, they can be non-reproducible, they can be transient, and the reasons, they can be very trivial. So like really looking into these issues are, like takes a lot of time, but it's not always fruitful. But at the same time, the, cover, the customers are actually facing availability degradation and the breaches of SLAs on their site, right? So we still need to handle those issues. Therefore, we design an a intelligent routing algorithm called adaptive server selection that helps us to pick the servers uh, with the best performance and route the queries to those servers. So basically the design comes into two parts. Uh, the first one is called the stats collector and the second one is a uh, server selector. And both these building blocks are located on a individual server uh, so that we can have the server to make their local decision and uh, route the queries smartly to the um, best uh, performed servers. So in this stats collector, uh, we basically store the stats that maintains the state about the performance of every server. Um, and uh, this stats store is local to each broker. Uh, this decision is taken consciously because each exchanging stats across brokers comes with a significant overhead and code complexity and it's hard to maintain. And not to say that by the time like we propagate the stats from one broker to another, the stats might just be stale. Uh, in a, like, I mean, in a system that process query in times of milliseconds. So basically in each stat store, uh, we record the number of in-flight queries to a given server and the uh, weighted moving average of this value uh, as well as the latencies of each queries uh, that got sent to that server. And on top of these stats, we can use an intelligent selection policy to pick the best server. And uh, those policies are basically um, configurable or pluggable. Uh, it can be as easy as just pick the server with the lowest latency, 
the lowest number of queries in flight, or some more sophisticated heuristics uh, that's that we're gonna introduce in later slides. So basically, in a nutshell, the adaptive server selection framework works like this. Um, so instead of this naive round robin penal broker, we now have a more sophisticated broker equipped with adaptive server selection. So the algorithm is gonna tell you like which server you should route your query to. Um, but uh, before we get any stats uh, on the broker about the servers, uh, we have this cold start problem. Uh, during a cold start, we will be using, uh, like falling back to the original round robin algorithm and route the queries to all the servers. But the difference is that now when we fire a query to a given server, we actually like increment one to the num number of queries in flight. And then we get the, when we get the results back from the server, we will decrement this value, and we will also record the latency of this query. So as we find out more and more queries to all the servers, we gradually but quickly build up the stats of all these servers in our broker. So when the next query comes, it can actually pick the server with the uh, best performance. So as in this uh, diagram, the broker routes the query to server two, so it must think that uh, uh, the server two has the better performance. So all these stats collection update, uh, like moving average calculation, they are done in an async manner. Uh, because we want this uh, all to be out of the critical path of query processing. We really want to honor our promise of uh, uh, low latency query pr processing within Pino. So now let's talk about the policies. Um, the policies, yeah, it can be as easy as use the lowest latency server, the servers with the least number of queries. But uh, of all these pluggable selection strategies, after a good amount of literature research, benchmarking, simulation, production testing, we find out uh, there's a generic formula for all our production workloads. So on the surface, the formula seems simple. Uh, so there's a server score for each of these servers that is uh, obtained by multiplying the average latency with the estimated queue size raised to an exponential factor. And the lower the score is, the better, we, uh, the, better the broker thinks the performance of this server is. So, um, yeah, there are a couple of like deep uh, hidden meanings behind this uh, equation. First is that instead of using the raw Q size and the raw latency uh, here uh, in the equation, we use their moving averages. So this is because the moving average can smoothen out the spikes, basically for the stats we collected from the servers. Uh, but uh, which will kind of make our uh, system more stable. But at the same time, it still gives enough weight to the uh, most current history so that we can react fast. And uh, the reason behind this um, estimated Q size is that um, we really want to avoid the herd behavior by taking a, uh, into account the future requests that are gonna send to a particular server. So remember, we discussed uh, in the previous slides that uh, all our decisions are made locally on each broker without um, stats change or decision exchange among the uh, brokers. So uh, here we want actually each broker to individually kind of predict 
the concurrent behavior of other brokers. So this uh, moving average of the queue size is basically saying like what happens to the queue if like uh, other brokers also decide to send the queries to the same server. And this plus one here basically means that hypothetically we send this one more query to the server, what will be the load on the server look like? So this exponential function n here is basically a tunable parameter. Uh, there's also another tunable parameter within this uh, exponential weighted moving average. Uh, so this basically gives us the uh, ability to actually give different weights to, for example, uh, how fast it can react to the change of the Q size and uh, how fast it will re react to the most recent batch of data. So they, uh, like by tuning this, we actually adapted this um, um, algorithm to all our workloads uh, in production. So to summarize, the, server, the design of server selection policy uh, mainly have uh, a few important traits. Uh, first, we want to make the server selection policy easy to compute so that it doesn't take a lot of resources and add latency to our end-to-end -end query processing. And then we also want this uh, policy to be uh, well-behaved even though they are all making decisions locally. So well-behaved means there's no th thundering herd problem, there's no oscillation. So uh, think of a case, let's say if server two, uh, for some reason is performing better than the other two servers. So we don't want uh, at this time all the brokers concurrently sending all the requests to this server, which will just uh, overload that server and then all the uh, brokers will kind of detect the latency and back off. This will ca uh, cause like uh, really severe oscillations in our system and also like actually degenerate our performance. So we did that by using that uh, um, sophisticated heuristics with the tunable parameters. And uh, we also want this algorithm to detect the slowness on the servers uh, as quickly as they detect the um, recover of the server. So in this case, we basically mean that um, when server becomes slow, we want to quickly roll queries uh, away from it. But when it self heals, let's say in half an hour, the algorithm will need to detect the uh, self-healing event quickly and roll the queries back to this server. Okay, before we say how exciting the result is, we need to make sure that this algorithm is not actually re uh, regressing our performance. Um, we did a bunch of performance benchmarks, which is first we just m measure the shared time um, or the shared overhead introduced by doing this desk collection and uh, the score calculation. And figure it introduced just sub-millisecond level of overhead, which is good. Even better is that uh, after we measure the end-to-end -end latency of these queries, we find that uh, after having this uh, intelligent uh, routing algorithm, uh, our uh, average query performance actually becomes better. So as we can see with different QPS, it's even like more significant when we have a lot of QPS. Uh, so this basically comes from that, uh, the fact that we are routing the queries to the best performed server. So after we've rolled out this, this feature to uh, our production system, we actually see a drastic reduction of the alerts caused by the slowness issues. And the team can now spend more like quality time 
just triaging those most important server slowness issues. So let's take some production events uh, as an example here. So we, we've seen this uh, nick flip issue in our production environment, which caused multiple uh, Pino servers to see elevated uh, latencies uh, transiently, uh, and uh, after which these servers just recovered. So as we can see here, uh, when the latency spikes happen on these servers, the adaptive server selection algorithm is quick enough to route the QPS away from those servers that are impacted. And after those servers recovered uh, from this slowness issue, the algorithm will just route these queries back to the servers, so everything back to normal. Uh, things might be more evident in this uh, like prolonged server slowness issues. In this case, basically a bug in our production environment uh, misconfigured the JVM heap size and it caused a prolonged um, like, uh, drop in the performance of uh, a particular server, which is this uh, olive green server here. We can see its latency shoot up and uh, it slowly uh, like recovers. Uh, so upon detection of this event, the adaptive server selection just route queries away from this server. And as it gradually recovers, uh, we route more queries back to the server. So the ultimate goal uh, of this adapt for, uh, adaptive for server selection feature is to prevent latency degradation when sub only a subset of servers are performing poorly. So at LinkedIn, uh, we've seen that this feature has helped us prevent latency degradation for our users for more than 90% of the occurrences when there is a server on the performance. Uh, this helps uh, us really like boost our overall availability and uh, resiliency. Okay, so as the second half of our resiliency story, uh, we have the uh, automatic query clean, which is trying to protect our brokers and servers from out of memory exceptions. So why this, important, why this is an important problem to solve? Um, I mean, Pino has a really wide range of variety of mixed query patterns on a table. Sometimes uh, when a production table that has mostly latency queries, uh, a user can just uh, fire ad hoc data exploration queries or some really expensive queries, uh, which will have wide range of impact. So in these cases, the uh, CPU and memory intensive queries can slowly, uh, sorry, silently slow down the uh, concurrent queries uh, on the server. And um, the bad thing is, this thing is like hard to detect. It's mostly silent. Until in the extreme case, it crashes the server uh, and causing some uh, out of memory exceptions. And each server can take around like 10 minutes to restart in this case. And uh, even make things worse is that uh, the user get no proper warnings because the servers will just die with out of memory exceptions. The servers will not get any warning signs. So we, they will keep trying till they keep bringing down our servers till all replicas of a particular server set goes down. So in that extreme case, basically our availability dips to zero. So we really want to prevent this cascading effect. And uh, on the administer side, it is hard for us to triage the OOM exceptions because we need to kind of manually look into the log and find what kind of query pattern rings the alarm in your brain that this query may be the corporate 
and sometimes we need to do experiments, and sometimes these are hard to reproduce. So, yeah, we need something uh, that can deterministically basically catch the queries and kill them. So here is basically a scatter gather uh, penal query workflow uh, where a broker basically fans all the queries to the servers and the server will send the result back to the broker for the final reduction. So as we can see here, the womb exception can happen on both servers and brokers. And the servers and brokers actually, they have very different uh, uh, str uh, architecture and uh, design. So in this case, we actually need a general womb protection framework that will work for both our servers and brokers by killing the high-risk queries on the fly. The challenges here uh, is that um, Pino currently does not have any um, like runtime query tracking um, mechanism that uh, can track the memory usage of each individual query. I mean, by the time we build this. So this is mainly because uh, Pino server and broker, they use this uh, like thread pool to get the maximum concurrency when we are processing these queries. And uh, in the thread pool, a lot of things can happen, like the tasks of different uh, queries can interleave on a thread, and the situation is really complicated, so it's harder to track. And on the other side, the Java also doesn't provide a very clear memory management system which tells us like how large is each object and how we calculate the deep size of each object. I mean, there are third party uh, libraries to do so and uh, we can al also like leverage maybe JNI, but a lot of them requires a uh, stop of the world to calculate the object size, uh, which is an overhead we cannot take. So, we still want to honor our promise for low latency query processing. So we w want to do these things uh, with as low latency as possible. With this important concepts in mind, we basically designed a um, automatic query killing system uh, with two building blocks. Uh, the first one is called uh, query stats collection, which basically instrument the query and let it publish its own usage. And the second part is a uh, query stats accounting framework, which basically gathers, gathers the usage of each query and uh, kill the like corporate query when there's a OOM risk. Okay, so. For stats collection, intuitively, the first thing to do is that we need to sort out in a um, thread pool um, environment which thread is actually working for which query. So let's take Pino server as an example. There are say, this runner, pool thread, uh, runner thread pool and worker thread pool. So when a query lands on the server, it will first pick a uh, thread from the runner thread pool as the parent execution thread. And then it will find all the tasks to a bunch of worker threads so that the penal segments can be processed on these worker threads in parallel. Um, basically here what we want to do is we add this uh, tree-like uh, query context uh, structure to trace like which of uh, the threads in the thread pool is working for, for example, query one. So we do this by setting up a context prior to each execution. Uh, the context basically contains the query ID and the distinct task ID. And uh, after this, we can now do instrumentation. The instrumentation is basically we allocate a um, 
thread local volatile variable for each of these uh, threads on the thread pool so that uh, the thread itself when it's doing execution can publish their usage to this uh, thread local variable. So for example, here, if we want to do memory tracking, we can use the thread MXB and get thread allocated bytes to track the bytes allocated for a given thread. Uh, so it's not limited to this. We can also track like, things like CPU time. So the good thing about this uh, general, uh, general tree-like uh, context model is that uh, it is general enough so that it can be adopted both on the server and the broker to handle things like uh, finite size um, thread pool or like dy uh, dynamic size thread pool, things like this. And it also has uh, very low overhead because we don't really take uh, software locks when we're like writing this um, usage to this uh, volatile um, uh, variables. Okay, now let's zoom into one query execution thread, for example, a worker thread. Before it does any work, it will first uh, set up a context for task, like uh, which query I'm working for and what is the task ID. And then it will basically grab a bunch of penal segments and start to process small, uh, like small chunks of each segment. This will be an iterative process, and in each loop of the process, it will report its own up-to-date um, usage. So here, if we want to account for memory, it will be uh, bytes allocated. So with the execution context and the usage report properly set up in the query execution threads, we can then have a accounting thread sitting outside of the um, query execution uh, and do the accounting and killing work. So basically what it does is that uh, uh, upon each invocation, it records like what each thread is working for and uh, how much usage uh, it has reported. Then when there's an immediate risk of OOM, it will aggregate this usage uh, by the query ID and pick the query with the most, uh, let's say, memory consumption and flag the interruption flag. So in this case, the uh, strategy here terminate the query with most uh, memory is actually pluggable. Uh, we can set different uh, like trigger thresholds for it. For example, in a very extreme scenario where we have, let's say, 95 or 96 percent of the uh, heap occupied, uh, we can add another uh, strategy called panic strategy to kill all the uh, in-flight queries on the server to protect the server from like out of memory exception. And uh, this uh, accounting thread will keep rescheduling itself uh, every uh, a few milliseconds. And the overall like logic of doing this aggregation and the accounting uh, might be a little bit complicated in code but uh, it can actually be simplified and viewed as a sampling-based approach. So let me explain here using this example. Basically, the uh, accounting thread here, uh, it sees a uh, immediate risk of OOM at time t, so it will need to um, track all the usage of these three queries in a thread pool of four threads. So let's rewind a bit. At time t minus four delta, we basically have query one running all the, on all the threads, so it will basically report its own memory usage. And the accounting thread will record this usage and also the uh, query ID on each thread. So at time 
t minus three delta, the execution of query one on thread one has actually finished. So in this case, we will actually keep the record for uh, query one because the, there are other tasks uh, of query one running on other threads. And we'll also update the usage of query one on other threads. And so on and so forth. So in the end, we actually get the uh, historical usage of all the uh, queries, like their task on each thread. So when we find all there's a uh, umrisk at time t, we basically collect all the usage by their query ID, and then we can find out the most expensive query to kill. Um, this global instrumentation and aggregation framework is applicable to both our servers and brokers, and it sits outside of the query execution path, so it uh, introduces really negligible uh, overhead. And it also helps us to return the proper query killing information to the user. Okay, so after we wrote all uh, this framework at LinkedIn, we actually did some performance benchmark and found that the overhead introduced by the sampling and aggregation process is actually only 0.3%, which is very, a very small amount of CPU cycle. And it does bring us with very large operational benefits that now we are less worried of, uh, of the womb exceptions as both administrators and users. And it, at the same time, it also helps us to identify all the expensive queries. So, so after this has been deployed, we are able to catch uh, more than 85% of all the OOM crashes and prevent any cascading impact of availability degradation. And now we also spend a lot, time, a lot less time trashing those exceptions because now we have the framework to pinpoint those expensive queries. And we do have a custom dashboard uh, that uh, can actually actively post all the queries got killed. And uh, here it will uh, just uh, give the uh, like stage where the query got killed. Okay, so at the end, I want to introduce some exciting future works. Uh, so for Pino, we are actually actively designing a workload managed system, which basically can uh, have low priority queries yield to high priority queries and do some resource isolation. Uh, and uh, by gathering all this uh, information about expensive queries, kill queries, we can actually build also a admission control system that stops some really some queries that doesn't make sense before they even get admitted to the system so that we don't pay the extra cost of running them. Also, we want the query killing decision to be prop propagated among the servers. So once we kill a query on a particular server, we will then be killing the same query on all other servers. And finally, we want to enhance our adaptive server selection algorithm by use more enriched stats and enhanced uh, selection algorithms. Okay, yeah. Uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, welcome to contribute to Pinot.